Good morning to everybody. Uh, can I uh, acknowledge uh, Bill Nickerson, uh, one of the elders of the Wurundjeri people and uh, other traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting here today, and I pay my respects to elders past and present and all of you who are here amongst us today. Uh, to Soren Hermansen, Director of SAMSO Energy Academy in Denmark, uh, Candice Valsing, uh, of course, thank you, Stan Krapan, uh, the CEO of uh, Sustainability Victoria, and to all of you very good people uh, who have not just a lot of energy and commitment, but a lot of drive uh, and, uh, and, and I think a nature that says uh, we're on something that is unstoppable and we're going to keep going full steam ahead uh, and we will do that together. So con I think it's important to acknowledge the, the great strength uh, that is actually in this room. Uh, I'm very much delighted to be here uh, in a room full of people who are, are very active and, and have a very clear view about what needs to change uh, in our energy system and why, importantly. Uh, our government certainly uh, has been one of those governments that have been very much committed to uh, supporting the growth of community renewable energy projects uh, because we know and we share uh, with you the very clear view that things have to change uh, and governments have a very important role to facilitate that change and to show leadership when leadership is required to be shown, uh, regardless of what the arguments may be had, uh, certainly at a federal level. And we know that certainly community energy has a role, a very important role, to help us to reduce our carbon emissions in this state. Uh, community groups certainly are playing a very valuable role in positioning our state as a leader in renewable energy. And you do that so well because you cannot replace the grassroots projects that adopt new energy technologies. We're very well, well, well renowned, in fact, uh, as early adopters of technology uh, here in Australia. Uh, and certainly with uh, the communities that exist right across regional Victoria and the numbers of communities that I've come across in, in the time that I've uh, been in the energy space, really does give a great sense of encouragement, I think, to the rest of us uh, about what can be done when communities make up their minds to make change uh, at their local level. We know, of course, that uh, grassroots energy enterprises, and there's about 26 in Victoria alone, harness the power of communities to increase local energy security. They also, of course, contribute to regional development partnerships, certainly enhance community cohesion, reduce, of course, carbon emissions, and work towards a transition to renewable energy. Community energy projects create a number of benefits and advantages, aside for, from, of course, actually increasing uh, the amount of renewable energy that's generated in the state and, of course, reducing our impact on climate change. These projects, when well planned and efficiently and cost effectively executed, can bring communities together, giving you more control of your energy use and costs, grow jobs, attract investment and build local knowledge and capacity. So is it any wonder that those that are, are most vocal uh, and obvious in terms of their support for renewable energy are very much those communities uh, that very much a part of our regional economy right across the state. So by implementing supportive policies, and we've got to ask, well, what is the role of government, rather than having a, the terrible arguments that we're seeing played out uh, nationally? Uh, well, that's not what anybody needs, frankly. Uh, at best, they are a distraction. At worst... <laughs> at, at worst, they create anxiety uh, and, and really do destabilise what is effectively a very strong social licence that we all have to do more uh, in growing renewable energy and supporting the, the terrific communities that are actually doing a lot of the leadership at the moment. So congratulations to all of you for staying the course. Very important that you do that. So by uh, implementing supportive policies, uh, we are giving the renewable energy sector the confidence needed to invest in the projects and jobs that are crucial to our state's future. We're unashamedly 
uh, linking renewable energy and jobs and investment. Uh, prosperity ought to be acknowledged uh, and shared. Uh, and the flip side of that is that when we do nothing in this space or we attempt to take us backwards, we're actually taking our economic prosperity backwards and we will all suffer the consequences of that. In June last year, I was very pleased that uh, the Premier and myself uh, announced our renewable energy targets in Victoria, 25% by 2020, 40% by 2025. And I do ask people to remember that in Victoria, we are starting from a very relatively low base. It's about 12, 14%, moving towards 14%, but it is a very low base. What we will be doing is underpinning that uh, with a competitive reverse auction scheme, which we're actually designing right now. The scheme, uh, is being designed to deliver 1,500 megawatts of new large-scale renewable energy capacity by 2020, and then, of course, up to the 5,400 by 2025. It will support capital expenditure of around $9 billion in renewable energy projects, with, which will result in about $2.5 billion of direct investment in Victoria. And it will create the full amount, 11,000 jobs, uh, in construction over the life of the scheme, particularly in regional Victoria. And what I envisage from this is that while the main, up, main uh, effort, if you like, to reach those targets will come from large-scale renewables, the fact remains that many of these projects, uh, as they are being built uh, and relationships are formed by larger energy businesses uh, across regional Victoria, I'm very confident that there will be some very significant partnerships that will be established with local community uh, renewable energy groups uh, that we can actually start to see a significant uh, increase in the output uh, from those community organisations delivering more renewable energy and sharing very much at a more localised level the prosperity and the benefits that come from that. So recently we also set uh, new uh, uh, emissions reductions targets for Victoria. Uh, we are, have made a commitment that we will retake our uh, emissions reduction targets to net zero by 2050. Uh, we recently introduced and saw legislation passed in our Victorian Parliament uh, that will establish interim uh, emissions reductions targets five yearly so that we can provide the certainty that communities and businesses need to be able to get ultimately to net zero emissions. So showing leadership is very vital in all of this. Uh, governments ought to put their money <laughs> where their mouth is, uh, if you like, uh, and we ourselves have, uh, have set a mandatory emissions reduction target on government effort. Uh, and that is something that uh, we are taking up quite strongly uh, some of you will know of our and have heard of our solar trams initiative that was announced uh, about a month ago. Again, that is about government, our own energy purchasing power going towards supporting solar, large-scale solar projects in regional Victoria, which ultimately will, pa will power our tram network. So these are the types of examples that are important for us to, to show and to demonstrate uh, leadership in. Uh, I'm also certainly very delighted, of course, that uh, all of you, um, the broader Victorian community, uh, is very much joining us in taking the Take Two Climate Change Pledge, which was launched last year. So the ta Take Two Pledge was designed for all levels of government, business and community to pledge contributions to reduce emissions and to help set Victoria on the pathway to net zero emissions by 2050. It does very much showcase the great work that's taking place at all levels of community. Uh, and this is something that uh, we need to promote uh, and, to, and to celebrate as we lead the way uh, and certainly uh, so show further leadership to many of the politicians right across our nation about what ought to be done. Uh, I'd love it one day that we get back on the track where politicians and communities are actually working in lockstep and actually taking the journey together at the same rate, at the same pace, in the one direction. We'll get there, we'll come back to that, I'm confident, uh, but we need to keep that effort up. Uh, we cannot uh, be, uh, we cannot be, uh, we cannot blink in the face of uh, some very bad arguments that uh, are threatening to take us back to a place that uh, we will certainly pay significant consequences for. So, We've received over nearly 2,500 pledges so far to our Take Two Climate Change uh, Pledge. Uh, pledges include 28 local governments representing over 3 million Victorians, 
216 businesses employing about 230,000 people, 88 community groups with over 180,000 members, schools, tertiary institutions with over 240,000 students. That's real action, real action at a local level. So Victorian communities certainly play a vital role in reaching the targets that we've set and have already shown a, a growing interest to do just that by developing community-owned renewable energy projects, including wind farms, to achieve a more sustainable future. Part of our assistance, if you like, is uh, the establishment of a new energy jobs fund. So it's $20 million that we set aside uh, by government that is available to community organisations, businesses and the like, to actually get those really fantastic community renewable projects up and going. Of the 24 successful projects that we announced in round one uh, towards the end of last year, of the 24, 18 were from community energy projects. So that's amazing. That is, some of those are business cases, some of those are feasibility studies, but often it's those types of uh, assistance that is needed to actually get you to that next level. And uh, and I th I think it's probably fair to say that the one those projects that are most resilient uh, are the ones that actually do come from community organisations because you do the hard work. You do the hard work of convincing a whole range of people in your community uh, and you have the conversations, you think through the issues, you think through all of the implications at a real micro level. And by the time you actually get to a project that you can call your own as a community, you've already met so many, different, so many of the requirements that governments look towards for uh, viability. So I'm looking forward to those 18 renewable energy projects from communities coming forward for further rounds of funding to actually bring to life many of the projects that you have already worked up very, very well. We've got the second round uh, of funding that uh, close, closes this Wednesday, so if you haven't got them in, please, organisations, please get them in. There's going to be another $6 million of funding available. That'll be divided between industry and community streams, so please make sure you get those in. So. There's a lot more that I can talk about in terms of the technologies that sit with this, the, uh, the, the fact that we've got some really great projects that are already out there that we supported very early on uh, in our government, whether it's the Newstead project that wants to go 100% renewable, uh, the uh, Macedon uh, Ranges uh, solar, uh, timber farm solar, solar uh, arrays on their old timber mill. Uh, we are using those projects, those community projects that we're funding to, as a template, as a template for us to learn about how government can translate the learnings from those projects to other community organisations right across the state. So we are looking to you for that leadership uh, and to help translate the success in those communities to be shared right across the state. The projects will be different but in terms of the learnings uh, and uh, in terms of facilitating a, a quicker uptake and delivery of those types of projects, we don't want to waste those, we want to share them around. And so we're very keen to keep that going. So community energy, of course, uh, will be what sustains, I think, the, the conversation and the social licence. And our government certainly is continuing to assist with that. Last year, we released the Community-Owned Renewable Energy for Victorians Guide, and that is, uh, we, that is an acknowledgement, really, that a significant barrier to success for community energy projects is understanding and navigating existing regulatory and planning processes. These often are very cumbersome. We know that. We know that we've got regulations, uh, we've got systems that have been designed for large energy retailers, for large energy generators. For, for the large distribution businesses. So the focus on changing regulations, while that might not sound all that sexy, is actually very instrumental in facilitating the greater take up uh, and inclusion of community renewable energy projects in our, in, in our system of energy supply. Uh, that is crucial. So we are actually starting to work on working through the regulations to work out how do we actually free these up to allow uh, retailer licensing uh, in a way that is much, far more easier for community organisations to be able to, to have that authority to, to trade and sell electricity within your own community so you're not relying necessarily on a large retail to do that. So see, these are some of the issues 
There's other issues, of course, and there's a discussion paper that is out right now in terms of the current uh, council rates framework uh, for electricity generation facilities. Uh, and we know that uh, Hepburn Wind was one of the, the early uh, community renewable energy projects. Um, they've got you know, some, some not insignificant challenges in terms of the rates that are required to be paid as a, an energy generator, which is very much based on regulations and requirements and obligations that were formed when we were talking about large uh, energy generators, not community scale ones. So they are barriers when you're talking about larger costs that have to be borne by, consume, uh, by community organisations that we need to review and we are doing just that. Uh, we will also see an, uh, a significant uptake of uh, energy storage technologies, large and small, microgrids, community level, household level, business level. Our government has already made uh, some commitments to see the early uptake of all of those. Uh, we've announced $5 million for large-scale uh, energy storage technologies. We will be saying more in coming weeks. Uh, we will also soon be releasing uh, our powering Victorian uh, energy document, which is about renewable energy, energy efficiency, and also energy security. And in that document, uh, we will have some narrative, uh, some comments to make about uh, community-scale uh, energy storage technologies because it's not just about making the renewable energy but it's also about making sure that we can secure that en energy supply that sustains the communities uh, and ultimately that's what we need to do is to complete that picture and we will do that as a state. Can I thank you all for your attention? I probably haven't been as entertaining or as funny as, as our previous two speakers but I did want to remind people and also to introduce some of the new efforts that we are implementing as a government and ones that we've got to keep building on. So I do wish you very well. I am absolutely heartened by the number of people who are here representing so many different community organisations, but also uh, other, other stakeholders, other industry players, academics, because ultimately community renewable energy projects uh, are ones that will sustain us and I think we have a broad understanding and acknowledgement of that, given that we have a whole variety of stakeholders who are here, uh, because we know that this is part of our future. It will be a strong future, and it will be a future that this government will support wholeheartedly. Uh, and I certainly hope uh, that the leadership that you uh, encourage us to, to play and to take uh, will be one that will ultimately uh, win this debate. It's a long debate. Uh, it will be that one that will be one, and ultimately we will see more community, more communities actually taking control of their energy and their energy future. So thank you to all of you, and all the very best for all of your projects.